Welcome back to Mr. Giant reacts to Ting and Ting and Ting. I'm Mr. Giant, and today uh, we're gonna watch another one here, and it's called How the Universe Is Way Bigger Than You Think. And this one was suggested by Kali Yukon again. Thank you very much for all the suggestions, man. And again, thank you so much for the uh, the super thanks that you put on the, the the last video there. You know, I'll have you know that all donations to super thanks goes back to the channel you know to get equipment and stuff like that so thank you so much for the uh the super thanks again and uh let's get into this here let's youtube and sim simmer and see how the universe is way bigger than you think this is earth you live here on this planet somewhere and everything that you've ever known is located right here but, just how small exactly is Earth when compared to the scale of the entire universe? Let's start by zooming out to where we can see our nearest cosmic neighbor, the Moon. You may think that the Moon is very close to Earth since it dominates... This is Earth. You live here on this planet somewhere, and everything that you've ever known is located right here. But, just how small exactly is Earth when compared to the scale of the entire universe? Let's start by zooming out to where we can see our nearest cosmic neighbor, the Moon. You may think that the Moon is very close to Earth since it dominates our night skies, but in reality the Moon isn't this close to our planet, it's actually about this far away. Wow. 384,400 kilometers away from you right now on average. You could fit 30 entire Earths in between this distance, and if you somehow were able to drive a car at a constant 100 kilometers per hour speed, it would take you about 160 days to drive the entire distance. Despite this incredible distance, however, 12 humans have actually set foot here, representing the furthest away that any individual human has ever been away from the Earth, and one of humanity's greatest achievements. This is what the Earth would look like from there if you were standing there with them, and if you wanted to communicate with somebody back at home, it would take a message about two and a half seconds to travel between you and them since that's how fast the speed of light can travel at. This is a photo that was taken on Mars, and that tiny dot that you see there is Earth as seen from the Martian surface. On average, Mars is an incredible 225 million kilometers away from Earth, but that distance can be as high as 401 million kilometers. Wow. That means that whenever humanity finally gets around to landing a human on the planet, that person will be 986 times further away from Earth than the astronauts who landed on the moon were. In wow. addition, the time delay for sending a message from Mars back to Earth isn't just two and a half seconds, it's actually more like 20 minutes each direction. Wow. Which would render instant communication in the event of an emergency impossible. Awesome. When we zoom out even further away, we can find the Voyager 1 space probe, which is the furthest away man-made object from Earth. It is currently located 138 AUs from the Earth, AU meaning astronomical unit, which is the distance between the Earth and the Sun, which means that Voyager 1 is 138 times further away from us than the Sun is. At some point on its long voyage, Voyager 1 turned its camera around and took this photograph. It may not look like much at first, but in my opinion, this is the greatest single photograph ever taken in all of human history. This tiny, pale blue dot is Earth, and I don't wow. think that anybody has ever said something as amazing about this as Carl Sagan when he said, If you look at it, you see a dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever lived, lived. That's kind of sobering when you think about it. Because we live here and we think we live in this massive, massive uh, globe. But then when you take it into, the, into the, the span of the thing of the universe, we're pretty much nothing. It's kind of like, like me coming from Grenada to America. Okay, Grenada is so small, I could walk that in probably a day easily and then i came to america and i'm driving for hours before i get to where i was supposed to go so on a smaller scale that's what it's like you know what i mean like there's the earth and then there's everything else and that is so far away and it's kind of sobering to think how fragile we could be or how fragile we are in in uh in the grand scheme of things you know we're just like one dot in just this big vast of nothing or something. It's egotistical of us to think that there's nothing else out there. There's got to be something else out there. 
whether or not I believe they're coming and, and looking at us and spying on us and kidnapping us and sticking probes in us. I don't know if I believe that. Maybe they're just minding their own business. Maybe we should to a certain extent too. Maybe we shouldn't uh, figure out if they're out there. We should leave them there, let them do their thing and we do our thing. What are we looking for? Unless it's to conquer and take. Because it's usually the ones that go out exploring and the ones that are looking for stuff to take. They ain't looking for stuff to go, oh, we come in peace and we love. No, they're going out there to take stuff. They're going out there to make stuff better. It's a, it's a capitalistic venture. It's not the wonder of exploration or nothing like that. I mean, Christopher Columbus proved that. That wasn't the wonder of exploration. He was going looking for stuff. He was going to look for stuff to take stuff, you know, to make life better for them. And I understand the whole make life better thing. We need to make life better right here before we try to make life better with all this material stuff. Let's get back to this video and see what else and how small we are. Let's all sober up and think. Us. On it, everyone you've ever heard of, every human being who ever lived, lived out their lives. The aggregate of all our joys and sufferings. Thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines. Every hunter and every forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilizations, every king and every peasant, every young couple in love, every hopeful child, every mother and every father, every inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, Every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there, on a moat of dust yeah. suspended in a sunbeam. Mm -hmm. Voyager 1 is currently traveling at 17 kilometers every single second, but even at that speed, it won't break out of the reach of our solar system for another 30,000 years. Wow. Once we go beyond the solar system, we arrive in our interstellar neighborhood. Here we shift to the light year unit of measurement, which is the distance that light travels in a full Earth year, or about 9.461 trillion kilometers. The star Proxima Centauri here is the closest other star to us other than our sun, but it's still 4.24 light years away from us. Wow. To put that into perspective, if it was heading in the right direction, it would still take Voyager 1 over 70,000 years to reach it. Wow. In other words, if you drove your car at 100 kilometers an hour like in our previous example to the moon, it would take over six times longer than the entire age of the universe is just to finally get there. There, and it wouldn't even exist still when you arrived. When we zoom out even further, we can see the entire Milky Way galaxy, inside of which Earth is located right here. This yellow dot is the furthest extent of humanity's radio broadcasts throughout history, which means that any possible aliens who live outside of this range are totally unaware of humanity's presence. It's complete silence outside of this yellow dot as far as we are currently aware, but the entire galaxy spans over 100,000 light years from end to end. There are over 100 billion stars and over 100 billion planets inside of our galaxy. But you have never seen the full glory of the galaxy at night, because 99% of the stars that you can see with the naked eye are limited to this small, tiny region right here. Wow! But even this massive galaxy is nothing compared to the rest of what's out there. Zooming out even further and we arrive at the local group of galaxies, a collection of 54 different galaxies that is about 10 million light years across. But zooming out even further and we can see the Virgo supercluster, of which the local group here is just a tiny segment of. There are at least 100 other groups of galaxies just like our own local group inside of here, and the distance from one side to the other is a mind-numbing 110 million light years. Wow. But even the massive Virgo supercluster is nothing but a quiet and tiny lobe of the great Laniakea supercluster, an enormous structure that is home to our galaxy as well as 100,000 other galaxies. The distance from one side to the other is 520 million light years, but from even there we can zoom out all the way to the entire observable universe and see that even the titanic Laniakea supercluster is just a tiny and insignificant part wow. of everything. 
This is the observable universe, and it contains everything that we know of. It is home to at least two trillion different and individual galaxies, which together contain more stars than there are grains of sand on the entire Earth. The distance from Earth to any side of the observable universe is 46.5 billion light years, which means that the entire width is 93 billion light years across. What's perhaps even more interesting, however, is what actually lies beyond the observable universe. Keep in mind that the observable universe is all that we can currently see. Yeah. It's entirely possible wow. that the rest of the universe outside of it is vastly larger and more fantastic than we can possibly ever imagine. We simply don't know what else is out there, because the light from these incredibly distant places has not yet had enough time in the universe's history to reach us yet back on Earth. And wow. the light from some places may never reach us at all. Yeah. Because some parts of space very far away from Earth are expanding away from us faster than the speed of light, oh. that means that the light from these places will never, in an infinite amount of time, so reach Earth. Oh, wow. Meaning that even if humanity is eternal and exists forever, there will still still be an unknown number of places in the universe that we will never know about or ever see. So, it is very likely that as unbelievably enormous as it seems, the observable universe is just a tiny slice of what we can currently see Whoa. of the entire universe. According to the theory of cosmic inflation that was proposed by Dr. Alan Guth, if it is assumed that cosmic inflation began at 10 to the negative 37th of a second after the Big Bang, and with the assumption that the size of the universe before inflation began was equal to its age times the speed of light, then this would seem to suggest that at the present day, the entire universe is 150 sextillion times larger than the observable wow. universe. Wow! That number for reference looks like this, with this many zeros. Let this number sink in for just mm -hmm. a moment. This would be similar to you thinking that the entire observable universe, everything that you could see, was the size of a light bulb, but then realizing that in reality the entire universe is larger than the former planet of Pluto. Imagine a light bulb in the center of Pluto, but we inside the light bulb were totally unaware that Pluto existed outside of it, and that's a similar situation to this. We are all so unbelievably small, but you shouldn't worry, because all that means is that there is so much left out there for us to discover together. Wow, that is crazy. It's so big and fast. Places we will never see. Places we will never know about. We just barely got past to get to Mars. And at the rate we go in, we'll never see because we're going to destroy what we have. So the question lies. Should we even bother? Or should we just concentrate on making this the best place that we can live? Or could, should we try to figure out what's out there? But also concentrate on making this the most peaceful place that we live so that our grandchildren could enjoy that. Our great-grandchildren, our great-great-great-grandchildren could enjoy what comes from the exploration. I think it's cool that people want to find out what's going on there. But on a country-to-country -country basis, when, okay, okay, I remember during the revolution, people saying, oh, Russia and America should pay attention to the troubles in their backyards instead of coming to us and, you know, creating issues there. So it's kind of like that, you know, I see. Here we are on Earth. We need to get along. We need to, uh, you know, love each other and treat each other with respect. We should concentrate on that. Because if we don't concentrate on that, um, let's say we find some other civilization or species out there and that species has figured out how to be peaceful are they going to teach us how to be peaceful or are they just going to say hey <laughs> you know we don't want the drama it's like a real it's like people staying single because they don't want to deal with the drama of being a really in a relationship <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> anyway man you all know, take care of each other out there i'll leave a link in the description for this video thank you again carly yukon for uh, suggesting this video and thank you again for the super thanks you all know, take care of each other all right cool runnings